Right, well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming here on this uh, historic day. Uh, my name is Dennis Hone. I'm the Chief Executive of the London Legacy Development Corporation. So I'm just going to give you a, a run-through of what we're going to do this morning. Uh, in terms of uh, our panel here, we're going to get some statements, first of all, from the Mayor of London, who is the Chairman of the Legacy Corporation. We're then going to hear from Sir Robin Wales, uh, the Mayor of Newham. And then we're here, going to hear from Mr Gold and Mr Sullivan, the co-owners of uh, West Ham United Football Club. And then we'll go after that, we'll go into a question and answer session. So without further ado, I'll hand over to the Mayor of London. Well, you, not Wherever you wish to be. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for coming on. A welcome to this great uh, temple of Sam and to the deal that they said would never be done. Uh, there were lots of people who doubted. Uh, sorry. You want to go there? Yeah, yeah. Can you not hear me? No, no. You can't. I'm speaking very loudly. I'll, okay, I'll go. Dennis, anyone else this morning? That's right. Anyway, can you now hear me? Brilliant. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the deal they said that could never be done. Uh, there were some people, you may remember, who doubted this city's ability to deliver a famous and successful Olympic Games. Maybe in this room, of course. Uh, but uh, they were confounded, and they then changed tack. And they then began to doubt the economic future of those fantastic venues. Above all, the stadium that entered the hearts of the nation in the summer of last year. And those doubters and cynics pointed, quite rightly, actually, as it happens, to the various Olympic stadiums around the world where the, the buddlier is sprouting up through the concrete and nothing's running down the, the, the track except tumbleweed. So I'm today very pleased to announce that this fantastic stadium over there will not only host community sports and rock concerts and athletics, and like the Diamond League, which we're going to have this summer, and all sorts of other sports where the ball is not necessarily spherical. This Olympic Stadium will now be the home of a great London football club that gave this country Bobby Moore and Trevor Brooking and Jeff Hurst, who's here today, and of course Alf Garnett as well. And after after a great contribution to our culture. After, after, a, after a massive negotiation, a long negotiation which many of you followed exhaustively and which went well into extra time. I think my last conversation with David uh, Sullivan uh, took place at about 10.30 uh, last night. They've actually, they've done the deal. Dennis, we signed this thing, are we? Yes, sir. Good, OK, good. Uh, I, I, do want to, I do want to pay tribute. Uh, to both teams for a deal that I think is great for West Ham and for London and for football and which fully protects the interests of the taxpayer and means that not only will there be no more subsidy uh, going into that, into the running of that stadium, but it will actually yield revenues as well uh, for London. And uh, I want to thank particularly, of course, uh, Kim and uh, Sir Robin uh, and everybody on the, on the, on the West Ham team, uh, David Sullivan, David Gold, uh, Karen Brady, and I want to pay tribute to my own team, uh, Dennis Hone and Neil Coleman. As any viewer of The Apprentice would expect, it has been a joy at an education to negotiate with Karen. And occasionally, one side would accuse the other of moving the goalposts. And I would say, that's the whole point. We're moving the goalposts, we're moving the seats, we're moving the roof, but, but we are keeping London's great Olympic Stadium. We're going to use it, amongst other things, uh, amongst other wonderful things, as the home of a hallowed and historic London football, football club. And with eight out of the eight Olympic venues now accounted for, the aquatic centre, the Velo, the Village, the Orbit, the IBC, NBC, the Copper Box, Eaton Manor, and now the Stadium, we are delivering the most effective park transformation any Olympic host city has ever seen, and an Olympic legacy of which I think London and the country can be very proud indeed. Thank you very much.
I now um, uh, welcome uh, Sir Robin Wales, the Mayor of Newham, to uh, address us. Morning. I thought I'd try and see if I was getting any response there, right? Uh, Newham has been committed from the start of this long process to ensuring a lasting legacy for the Olympic Stadium. For the benefit of Newham residents, London and the nation as a whole, transforming the East End was a key promise in the Olympic bid. And we in Newham are now investing £40 million to convert the stadium into a world-class multi-use attraction, which will give us 35% stake in what is the greatest stadium in the world. It will be the beating heart of the Queen Elizabeth Park and East London. Now, our investment in the stadium will be returned through a share of revenue, and I think Boris is right. We're going to see some, some great revenues, I think, coming from what is going to be a wonderful stadium. And that will enable us to support residents into jobs in an inspirational place. It will provide tickets to the stadium as rewards for those who put something back into our community. It will give local sports clubs access to the Olympic community track. We might find another local sports great, like Christine Oharugu, and it'll fire the ambition of Newham children as they cross the same finishing line as their sporting heroes. Now, we welcome, in Newham, we welcome the decision that West Ham has been chosen. West Ham is a community club, a Newham club, and they share our vision for East London. They've been that, they've been that community club in Newham for the last hundred years, and today's decision ensures that they'll be that for the next hundred years. Uh, we've played no part in the current concession deal, but Newham has now endorsed it through our joint partnership, and we're looking now to work with our partners to transform the stadium and the park. And I will also now say I want to pay tribute. Um, Newham Council has worked long and hard, and I want to pay tribute to our chief exec, Kim Bromley Derry, and our officers who have worked very hard with West Ham and with the LLDC to bring this um, difficult deal to a conclusion. Now that today's deal has been signed and agreed, we can deliver a century of community benefits for Newham residents. Millions of tickets for residents. Exclusive community days in the stadium for local people. A majority of the new jobs going to local people. And I can announce as a community benefit today that delivering the legacy will start this July with a 10K run starting and ending in the stadium. That's the beginning of our residents seeing this stadium as something that lives in our community. It's been a long time coming. It is the right decision for Newham, for London, and for the nation. Together, we are going to transform this magnificent stadium, achieve its potential, and deliver Great Britain's legacy promise for residents in Britain, residents in London, and from my point of view, residents in Newham. Thank you. I'd now like to invite the uh, co-owners of West Ham to uh, say a word. I'll let you choose which order you wish to to speak in. Okay. Um, can you hear me on the... Yes, you can. Um, well, it's uh, deja vu, isn't it? I'm, it just uh, seems like only a couple of years ago we were here, and I recognise uh, a lot of the faces. I'm actually even wearing the same tie that I, were, that I wore two years ago. Um, no, this is very exciting. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled at, uh, at the... At particularly thrilled that the... Um, that we've signed this deal today. Um, particularly, uh, I was pleased that, I, that it was signed while I was still young. Um, I was worried that it was going to go on indefinitely. Um, but thankfully, the deal has been done and uh, a new exciting future for West Ham Football Club. It's also great for London. I think this is a great deal for London. I think this is a great deal uh, for the country, in fact. Um, I think this will generate jobs currently in, uh, uh, when the uh, stadium is renovated um, and, and brought fit for purpose. Um, and then, of course, there'll be jobs uh, for the future ongoing. Just like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Karen Brady and her team, who have been absolutely magnificent throughout. I can't tell you that they've burnt the mid midnight oil. They've really... Um, you know, without them, I don't think this deal would have been done. I really would, I wouldn't. Uh, the other person I'd like to thank is David Sullivan, who has driven this uh, and driven us yeah, it, to this conclusion today, which I think is a momentous uh, moment in the, in, in the history of West Ham Football Club. Thank you. Um, I can't add much more to that than what David said. Again, I would like to thank Karen, who's done 98% of the work on this. I've just come in at the end 
and had a thank you from Boris, but really it's Karen's work, and I'd like to thank her for that. Um, I'll just say we, we really feel privileged to be going into this stadium. We realise how important it is for East London and the community. We, we, with the, we've had 13 sellout games in a row at Upton Park, and, and we, want, we desperately need a bigger stadium to make football affordable for all. And we will be continuing our policy of kids for a quid, half price game for adults. We want football to be affordable for the ordinary working class man, not just the corporate people. And that's why we want the bigger stadium. Um, and with, with the seats on, with the retractable seats on the running track, it really will fill the part. Behind the goal, the seats are even closer than they are at the Emirates Stadium. Uh, the sight lines from every part of the ground are better than Wembley. So it will be a smashing stadium at the end. And um, I'd just like to thank Boris and all his people because they fought us really hard over everything. But I think it's, a great, it's ended up a great deal for everybody. Uh, I know it's an old cliche, but this is a win-win situation for London, for, for the legacy and for West Ham Football Club. And, and in five or six years' time, uh, when, when, when we've got the increased revenue from this stadium, I think we can be a force to be reckoned with. And it's the only way forward for the club. Um, and it's just fantastic for everybody. Thank you very much for everybody. OK, so uh, thanks very much for those uh, opening remarks from, from our uh, panel today. And I'd, I'd take this opportunity to thank Lance Foreman and his, his team here at Foreman's for hosting this event so close to the iconic Olympic Stadium. We're going to move now into a question and answer session. Um, and uh, just uh, in terms of housekeeping, there's a, there's a couple of remarks I wanted to make. Um, obviously, we're going to pass microphones around. I'd like you to wait till the microphone arrives so that we can uh, hear the questions very clearly. And I'd like to ask you to identify identify yourself and the organisation you represent. Um, just in terms of the questions, I just, uh, there's obviously uh, uh, an interest in the commercial terms between the organisations that are entering into this agreement. Uh, you will um, accept from us that certain terms are commercial in confidence, so we'll, we'll open up as far as we can, but uh, we won't give you every dot every I and cross every T. And secondly, in terms of uh, uh, the uh, judicial review, review proceedings that uh, Leighton Orient are moving into, it would be, uh, you know, we're not able for legal reasons uh, to uh, go in and comment on that in any depth here today. So with just those two provisos, I'd like to invite uh, questions for the panel. Hi there, Geraint Hughes from uh, Sky Sports. A, a question for actually maybe quite a few of you on the panel is just, uh, how comfortable are you with the deal seeing the amount of taxpayers' money that is going into it? It's a, probably a question that many in the room would like an answer to. Uh, to Boris and, and, and to Karen and to, to, to Sir Robin as well, can we just have your, how comfortable are you with all this taxpayers' yeah. money? I mean, the reason this ta has taken so long to do is quite simply because we had to protect taxpayer value. That wonderful stadium cost about half a billion quid to build, as you will remember. It's a fantastic national asset, unfortunately, owing to decisions taken in a previous epoch uh, that, that was decided not to uh, make it suitable for football at, at, uh, at first go. Uh, so we have to uh, reorganize it, we have to refurbish it, uh, and you know, spend quite a lot of money uh, changing it around. That was inevitable because you know, there, was no, there was no roof on it, uh, or, or suitable for football. Anyway, so if you were gonna have a football solution uh, for the stadium, you were going to have to, to put uh, more money in. But the deal that we've done uh, today, and I think that uh, Karen and I think everybody would agree, is uh, good for the taxpayer, just in this sense, uh, that the, um, without going into too much of the, of the detail, there is a, a lot of uh, revenue sharing, uh, there are rents and so on, as you would expect, and the key, the key point I'd like to make is that uh, the taxpayer will be making money now from that asset. That's a, that's a great achievement by, uh, I think, the, our negotiators, and, and I think it's a, it's a good deal for West Ham too. I, I would just say, I mean, yeah, I think Boris's comment about um, it's a shame it wasn't designed for football. I have to say West Ham and ourselves have always been very keen that it would be designed for football, and we went in originally to try to do that. Given that, then certainly we in Newham Council have put £40 million loan in. We expect that back, and we think that we'll see a stadium that will return the surplus. 
it is worth just reminding ourselves, uh, it'd be interesting to look across the world at Olympic Stadia and say, where are you going to get the service that will pay back taxpayers' money? I'm not sure you can come up with any stadia. So it's a very big challenge. We just think it's an amazing place with an amazing, amazing stadium. And I think being in the centre of Stratford, which is probably the best connected place in London now, easily able to attract people. We were all there at the Olympics. You saw who came. You saw the Paralympics packing it in. It's a fantastic place for the stadium, fantastic stadium. And Boris is right. We think, and we can't really discuss the, the numbers, but we, we're very comfortable that we'll see our investment back. And then you start to talk about the benefits for community. And you're talking about one of the poorest places in the country and the opportunity to bring kids in, to inspire them, to do things that will transform the place. And I would remind everybody, two big, two big legacies from the Olympics, kids sports and transforming the East End was a big sale. I think this is one of the bits that will help. I think the work that's going on in the Olympic Park will make a difference. And I, I think as the park develops, we're going to be proud of this as a country, and we'll see some of that taxpayers' money coming back. Personally, I hope a lot of it comes back to Newham. I just, I just make the point that West Ham is, is, is the anchor, the anchor yeah. tenant. Yeah. But there will be plenty of other yeah. activation on that park yeah. that will bring in yeah. uh, revenues. And, and as Robin rightly says, I think the, the game changer in the, in the Olympics was people realising how easily you could get here. And it was the success of that mass transit that has, has made this, a, a, I think, a, what will be a very, very profitable venue. Uh, the first and most important aspect of this deal from our point of view was the fact that this was a world-class football stadium that had the right sight lines. It's going to be a UEFA 4 category, which is the highest that you can get. And that doesn't only mean that it can host West Ham matches, but God willing, one day a World, a world Cup match and, and certain other big international tournaments. But anyone that thinks we've had a free ride, we most certainly haven't. Uh, we want to pay our way. We accept that we have to pay our way. And myself and the two owners of West Ham have been very clear on that. Uh, we will put in a lump sum. Uh, we will uh, pay a rent uh, that will cover most of the running costs. And then, of course, we share in naming rights and other revenues. Um, but we accept that the cost... Uh, for making it that world-class stadium is coming uh, from the government, but we hope over 99 years that we've not only paid back that, but an awful lot more than that. Uh, and I reiterate what Boris said, we're there for West Ham for football, the look and feel of West Ham's home ground, and then on other days when we're not using it, it's, it's used by other international players to make it the, truly a world-iconic stadium. Okay, Ashley. Ashling O'Connor from The Times. Karen, um, probably just following on from that, how can you um, say to West Ham fans that this is their home when you don't own it um, and when other people have got access to it? And what the Premier League requires primacy of, of use. What, what happens if fixtures need to be moved around? There's a massive concert plan for one yeah. day and you have got to play a match. Yeah. Could you explain how that will work in practice? Uh, well, the most important thing is that we do have primacy for our fixtures, uh, regardless of what's going on in the stadium. That's a requisite of getting permission from the Premier League or the Football League to move, which we have. Um, secondly, it is, as you can see from the visuals, it's important to us that it looks and feels like the, the, the home of West Ham. When we're not using our stadium currently at the Bolin ground, we're using it for all sorts of other events. And that's what makes it really a powerful venue. The fact that it's used, that people are using it, does have that sense of community. Um, we can only use it for as many matches as we have, and we will use it for all our home matches. Uh, and then we will uh, allow others to use it because that's the right thing to do. Uh, we have a very close relationship with UKA. We believe in the legacy uh, for the community, and we want to help deliver that. But when you come to this stadium in 2016 for the start of uh, West Ham season, it will look and feel like West Ham's ground, and it will look and feel like a football stadium. Owen. Uh, Owen Gibson from The Guardian. Um, Boris, can you say a little bit more about the, the deal you've done to ensure there is some upside for taxpayers if the club gets sold? I know the West Ham are saying that, that absolutely the club's not for sale, but if that does happen, and why is it only 10 years that you're locked in for? And Dennis, can I just ask you a little bit about the engineering challenge here? I mean, it's quite an ambitious re-engineering of the stadium. Are you confident you'll be able to do that on time and to budget? Okay. Yeah, ju just, just on that, uh, the, I, obviously, and I can't go into the, uh, the details, but clearly if, there's, if there is a, um, an uplift in the value of West Ham as a result of this brilliant uh, arrangement, then, uh, and, and there is a sale, which I, obviously is not the intention, 
That's true, but, Boris. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if that were to happen, uh, then clearly uh, the taxpayer has got to be protected in, in those circumstances. And uh, yes, you're, you're quite right that uh, we've got some protections there. Well, uh, because yeah. I'll, I'll, we'll see what happens after, thereafter. David Sullivan and myself, uh, you know, this has been a life ambition, um, uh, and this is a uh, this is a fulfilment of a dream, um, and it's our intention to be at this football club. Um, I hate using the the D word, but until we die, um, and there's every possibility that we would hand over the uh, the ownership of this great football club of ours to our children. So you know, it's it's more than uh, it, you know, it's very, very important to us that uh, we continue the stewardship of this great football club and then pass it on to our children. So, so just to answer the second part, and, well, first of all, on the 10 years question, obviously there, there's an issue around the in, uplift in value that comes from a move to the stadium, and therefore it's right that the, uh, uh, we participate in that if, it, if uh, there was a change in control. But after 10 years, a lot of the value in the club will have been generated by West Ham's activities in that stadium, and there is less reason for the public sector to participate in that. So it's a negotiation point. In terms of the confidence in building, we've got a program Program of works. Uh, we've got uh, MACE as program managers uh, working on that. We're very confident that we will do the conversion works in time. We have float in that program to enable us to do it. We are very confident by the summer of 2016 we'll have a world-class stadium that is adaptable for year-round activities including athletics and it can move quickly between the two formats. So we're very confident we can deliver against that. Rob Harris from Associated Press. A um, couple of questions, first of all, to from West Ham. Um, to what extent you're saying that the revenues will be turbo uh, charged, you know, uh, that you're getting from the stadium. Through the state, are you now going to have a competitive advantage significantly over other London clubs, other Premier League clubs that haven't had uh, sort of state-funded stadium to get those revenues for Premier League financial fair play or UEFA financial fair play? And to Boris, um, how successful have you been in so far in finding other sports to move into the stadium? Obviously no deals yet, but are you close to any of the deals with you know, any American sports, any other sort of sports around? Uh, the, just, sorry. Well, just on, on the general interest in the stadium, it is very, very great. There are loads of people who uh, love the venue. Uh, we've had talks with uh, all sorts of interests, uh, not just in this country, uh, but, but around the world, as, as you suggest. Uh, and I see no restriction on the kinds of sports that um, we should have there. You know, it's a, a whole new ballpark, as they say, and, and you might as well, you know, we have baseball as far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we're looking, uh, a question I, I imagine someone will want to ask, we are obviously looking with great interest at the Rugby World Cup in, in 2015. Uh, we are working on that. I can't give you a definitive answer at the moment, but uh, obviously it'd be a great thing if we could make that work too. Um, and on the other point, the Olympic Stadium was built and paid for for the Olympics. That's over now. That's, that's why that great stadium was built. That investment has been made. If uh, it's the desire that it's continued to be used and the legacy is, has to be delivered, if it's going to be offered not only to myself, but it was available to anyone to bid for, then it has to have the right sort of uh, infrastructure for people that may want to use it as a concessionaire to be able to use it. And that includes promoters of concerts, community sports, rugby games, international football matches, and other events like American <coughs> football, as well as football. So um, they've, uh, they've understood... Uh, on this side of the table that if they want it used and if they want to create a heart in this park they're going to have to invest to get it right that attracts people to use it and I'm one of those users and over the period of time that I hope to be using it for I'm absolutely positive that not only will we pay back the investment for the conversion we'll pay back the original investment of the cost of building that stadium. Thank you. Roger. Roger Blitz, Financial Times. I'm trying to get any more information about the revenue sharing. Um, is revenue sharing the same as, uh, is the same sharing arrangement the same for losses, for example? Uh, not as far as I know. Yeah. No, pass, um, pass the one down the line to you. <laughs> so um, uh, we've entered no. into we enter into an arrangement with uh, Newham to um, uh, take a long lease over the stadium, and then we grant the concession agreement to West Ham. So we're the joint. Um, 
owners, as it were, of the stadium. We obviously have got a business plan that shows that this will operate at a profit. West Ham are an absolutely fundamental part of making sure that it operates at a profit, and therefore it will generate the revenues to uh, um, support the investment that's been put into this stadium. Now, clearly, in any 99-year period, there may be some fallow years, but the strength of the money going into there means that we're very confident that we can sustain the stadium and that it will, will be profitable and it will return the investment to the taxpayer over that period of time. In terms of losses, they, they would be shared equally in the way the revenues were. There, there, there's a sharing arrangement. As we said earlier, we're not going to go into all of the uh, commercial details. There is a sharing arrangement between the parties, but we're very confident that uh, this is going to be a profitable venture yeah. over, over the uh, 100 but years. How, how long is this revenue sharing agreement it, it, for? It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's the same as the uh, West End concession. It's a 100-year agreement. I, I Are there any break clauses in it at all? 99. But, I, I, I think yeah. extreme mis misbehaviour, yes, obviously. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's important to say this is a 99 year agreement. We've non payment. Yeah. We, we've actually done an awful lot of modelling with due diligence. Yeah. We're really confident about the business plan. We wouldn't be able to invest money if it wasn't for the fact that we are confident about that business plan. And part of that business plan is the return to the various the two partners. And uh, we're very, very confident about that. But, but what revenues are we talking about? What about new revenues that come in, that might be coming? Is, uh, is this adaptable? Perhaps I ought to say. Obviously, the football club itself has revenue that it would generate regardless of whether it was in this stadium or whether it was at uh, the Bolin ground. And those are things like broadcast revenue. Um, the things that we are sharing are things, if I, if I can say, sure. things like naming rights. Uh, the lion's share of that the goes uh, to uh, the LLDC. There is some sharing of catering. Uh, we retain all the revenue from commercial, uh, obviously retail and ticket income, um, but the business model uh, includes obviously that's catering. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, that that uh, that also is our rent is on top of that and our capital sum. Yeah. Uh, no, just sorry about this. I need to pass on to what, someone else. What does the um, taxpayer get in terms of this sharing? Well, well, there's there's rents, there's there's uh, uh, as Canada just said, th there's, there's uh, revenues from uh, the naming rights uh, and there's revenues from catering, beverages and, uh, and you name it. And we think uh, that this will be, th these will be very healthy. Can I, can I just answer this question very bluntly? Well, there's money coming in from the West Ham Agreement. Money there's money coming into this from all of the other events that we hold in the stadium. And there's outgoings in terms of the maintenance and upkeep of the stadium well, over the period of thing. All of the financial modelling, modelling that has enabled the investment not only by Newham but by the government in this, shows that it's going to be a profitable venture. And that's the bottom line in terms of the technical advice we've taken, the financial advice uh, across that. But so that we couldn't, we're, we're borrowing £40 million pounds to invest. Um, we couldn't do that unless there's a revenue stream to pay for it. We're not allowed to do it. So it's money we wouldn't have. It's prudential borrowing. It's money you can borrow if you can pay it back in a, in a proper way. So we couldn't do that if we weren't confident that there would be a, a business return. But I will also say that there is going to be a massive community return that we shouldn't underestimate. Tickets for games, tickets for people to get in, 10 days in the stadium when kids can come in and be excited and be inspired. And one of the things the Olympics, I thought, taught us was inspiration can make a difference to people's lives, and that's something we're very keen on. Okay, I, I drink. Uh, Adrian Warner from BBC London. This is a question to Boris Johnson, to Robin Wales. Um, obviously, we're seeing, I don't need to remind anybody in this room, of massive public costs. How can you justify spending £40 million pounds or giving £40 million pounds to a world of football which is rare, which makes well, millions of pounds? It's very, very simple. OK, let me, let me have a right. go first of all, Adrian, because I think this is, this is the, the heart of the, of the question this morning. Uh, oh. is, is the taxpayer paying too much to give this stadium a fantastic long-term future? I don't think so. I think when you look at the deal that we're doing, the income that's going to come from rents, from catering, uh, from, uh, from hospitality, from naming rights, uh, they will be very, very substantial. And uh, that means that there will be no more uh, subsidy from the taxpayer to keep the whole thing going. And you also have to look, quite frankly, at what the alternatives would have been. Suppose we hadn't 
uh, refurbished this stadium. Suppose we'd left it as an athletics-only uh, stadium in the way that the uh, Olympic Games of 2012 uh, left it for us. I don't think that Londoners, I don't think that the world would have thought that was a great future for a venue that entered everybody's hearts and they think is fantastic. I think it's the overwhelming view of people in this city, in this country, that you should have our national game uh, in the stadium as part of what goes on there. And uh, that you should also have lots of other fantastic uh, attractions and entertainments as well. That's what we've pulled off. Uh, the, the result, uh, I think, represents a very good investment for the taxpayer because it will deliver long-term revenues and it will also help to regenerate uh, part of East London and, and create thousands and thousands of jobs. You, you are right. Kim will pick up some stuff on, on, on some of the detail, but this isn't part of the cuts. The money we're borrowing is prudential borrowing. It's completely separate from anything else we can do. We couldn't have that money unless we can pay it back. It's money that we get, and if we didn't borrow it for that, we couldn't use it anywhere else. So it has absolutely no impact on what we as a council do. Though interestingly, uh, last week at the Local Go Government Chronicle Awards, we won the award for the most efficient council in the country because we are very, very good at what we do. And partly that comes from things like saying if we put money into what's going to be... Uh, Boris has described it as a money-making machine. I wouldn't want to disagree with that. I think we're not giving it to West Ham. West Ham are going to be a very important part of that stadium, but so are lots of other things going to be in that stadium and lots of other opportunities in the south of the park. It's a much bigger thing than that, but my goodness want to be stronger with West Ham in there. So as far as as far as we're concerned, we get this money back and profit on top and all the community benefits. But I think Kim's got something to say I on mean, that I, as well. I just want to say quite simply this is a loan that's fully repaid. This isn't this isn't putting forty million pounds with no return. It's a, a loan that's fully repaid plus community benefits plus a profit share. Yeah. It's as simple as that. It's a sound investment yes. as far as Newham's concerned and we think the community and Newham gets an awful lot out yes. of it. Okay, Simon. News. A question for the two Davids. You'll know a lot of your fans are reluctant to move from Upton Park. How would you sell this to them? And one for you, Dennis. Can you just square the, the figures? When you take out the, the Newham contribution and the West Ham contribution, what is the total amount of public money likely to be committed to the conversion, including the £38 million from the ODA? Do you want us to go first? Um, Basically, um, most of the fans we've consulted are in favour of the move, where we've been able to show them uh, what we're doing. And with this, we have, a, we have a, a supporters advisory board who voted 99 to 1 in favour of the move. And now we believe when the supporters can see what we're doing uh, with the ground, they will agree with us. Uh, we've not even been able to show images up to now. So people have been voting based on nothing. So um, we're very, very confident that fans will see common sense and, and realise that, that we have a ground at the moment that's too small, that the, 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 the rail links are appalling. Often they shut the tube down on a Saturday and people have to walk miles. There's no, there's, uh, uh, now Stratford has the best links from all, all over the country. We'll have supporters from way into Essex, into Kent. When the high-speed rail link starts in 2018, we'll be six minutes from St Pancras, so people will come to us from central London, and, and they will see, for the good of the club, we need a bigger stadium. You can't expand Upton Park, uh, more than a few thousand, and the, and, the, and the links are just appalling, and we think they'll, they'll all support the move, and we're very, very confident. Everybody we've shown the images to, 99 out of 100 support the move. In terms of uh, the funding of the adaptation works, there's a cocktail of funding. There is money coming in from government. There's the 40 million from Newham, and there is monies that were previously provided, uh, as you know, Simon, within the uh, public sector funding package for the Olympic Games. What I don't want to do is disclose the total money that we've got in our budget. We're obviously going to the market to get contractors at this point in time to do the works on the stadium, very similar to what was done during the Olympic Games and the uh, quarterly reporting. We never disclosed closed our budgets while we're in the middle of uh, uh, procuring contractors. It's, uh, we want to get the best value for the taxpayer through that process, so we don't want to uh, disclose our overall budgets at this stage. Um, now, I just want to say, we're in the last few minutes now, so I'm going to try and put a few together, so we'll take three or four questions together and then wrap up. So, firstly, the gentleman there. Hi, I'm Matthew Dunn from the Daily Express. Uh, question for West Ham. With all due respect to the gentleman two rows in front of me, how important is the ongoing premiership status of West Ham to making the sums work? 
Okay. And David, did, I'm going to take a few questions together so that we can come back and finish off this uh, press conference. So David? Um, David Bond, BBC. Um, just wanted to clear up um, the issue with the rest of the borrowing. We know about the £40 million loan which Newham is taking out, but what is the total sum of borrowing uh, towards the contribution, uh, the, the conversion cost? Where will that borrowing come from? And where will it actually sit? On whose balance sheet? Okay, and is there one last question that we can take, or should we finish on those two? Okay. Sorry, in terms of... Was it the 40 million? It, it, I think we've answered the 40 million. That was, that was excluded, yes? Yeah. You didn't want any more details of ours, yeah? Yes. So in, in terms of additional borrowing, that some of it will sit on the LLDC's balance sheet. We're, we're taking money that we're investing into this. And as we've said earlier, that will be repaid out of the surplus that the stadium makes each year. I want to make absolutely clear that the, gener the surplus that is generated each year is not just from the uh, arrangements and the concession arrangement at West Ham. It comes from the full activities and the range of all year round activities that will take place on the stadium. So it sits on our balance sheet. As I said earlier, I'm not going to go into individual elements. I don't want to go into a position where you can aggregate all the numbers and our contractors and everybody else then knows what our available spend on this project is. It's not, it's not the sensible thing to do. Throughout the Olympic Games, we never did that. Uh, we worked uh, with the market to get the best deal for the taxpayer in terms of those works. Can I just, uh, can I just uh, thank uh, our players for attending today? It's great They're to here. see them here, looking fantastic, fit, and available for West Bromwich Albion. <laughs> um, no, in answer to your question regarding uh, how important it is for the football club to be in the, in the Premier League, of course it's very, very important for us to be in the Premier League. However, we've budgeted and uh, there is a contingency should we get relegated. We, don't, uh, we, we plan for it, but we don't expect that to happen. Okay. So I'd, I'd like to just think, thank you all um, very much for, for coming along today. We're going to split now. The print media are going to stay down here and we can uh, answer some more of your questions and technical questions. And I believe that the cameras and others are moving upstairs now at this point in time. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, panel.